Hello everyone, my name is Dawson, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm bringing you the best settings to use here in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Now, before we get into the settings, if you guys are new to the channel and enjoy what you see, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, also on post notifications, so you guys are my daily Modern Warfare 3 class set of videos. Without the way, let's get right into the settings. So here we all go first. Obviously, this is like controller settings and such, so obviously my aiming input device is controller. Now, my button layout is on tactical flip. So basically what that means is that I prone with R3, prone slash crouch with R3, and then I melee with circle. I just feel like it works best for me ever since I like switched to, I don't know, more of a sweaty play style, I guess. But obviously this is just totally what works for me. And then I use flip, so that means I aim with L1 and shoot with R1. I just feel like those two buttons are a lot more responsive than L2 and R2. And that's just basically the main reason why it's that. It is kind of like a hard change to go through. Like I changed like a long time ago. So it is definitely kind of hard to adapt to it, but you know, with some playing time, it definitely helps. L1 button ping, don't know what that does. Obviously I did already say that I'm on flip. My stick layout is default. Uh, controller vibration is off. I also turned this off like quite a lot, quite a lot, ugh, quite a long time ago. Sorry about that. But uh, controller vibration, sometimes some people say it messes with your aim. Like if your controller is vibrating like out of, you know, out of control basically. But um, uh, it's more of a placebo. I've turned it off because I just don't like it and also it helps with your like controller battery if you want to worry about that uh trigger effect is off uh i don't know why would you would even like turn this on unless you're trying to get like the full like in-depth feel of the game but uh other than that i don't know why you'd have that on now for your dead zones now these are all personal to your own controller so my left stick is at five so basically you want these anywhere between like one to ten theoretically and then your max is like 99 i've always had mine at 99 now my right stick is at 15 because I do have a lot of stick drift on my right stick. So obviously if you do have a good controller and it's still like brand new and such and still works perfectly fine. Again, I would stick between like the one and 10 area, but of course I gotta go with 15. My L2 and R2 dead zone are zero, obviously so it could get the most response out of them. And then I'll switching to aiming. My horizontal and vertical, these two basically go together, are both six six. Uh, I've seen a lot of people run anywhere between like four to like eight. And that's a pretty good margin to go through. 6.6 six is a pretty default standard base to go through. A lot of pros run like 6.6 six or 5.5 five at the early start of the game. Now, my ADS sensitivity multiplier is actually a lot different than a lot of other people. Like, a lot of other people just keep it at 1 or, like, go to at least, like, 0.8. But I'm really slow because, honestly, I feel like with a slower ADS sensitivity multiplier, your aim assist sticks a lot more when you're, like, a lot slower. So that's why I'm at a 0.65. Uh, for your sensitivity multiplier basically these just change obviously third person if you play it in third person ground vehicles but a lot of these i just don't like mess with vertical aim access uh, all these are standard don't know what that does now my tax stance i barely in tax stance even though i know you have to do it for like some camo challenges uh i just leave it at one because it's just default aim response curve is dynamic uh i've always ran dynamic in a lot of the previous cods ever since this setting has become a thing uh, obviously you can play around with it but Again, I wouldn't play around with it too much where you're switching to standard for like five days and then switching back. Switching back like through settings a lot is just going to hurt your gameplay. So then my, I don't even know what this is. Mine's at one. I've never messed with that at all. Uh, my multiply focus is at 0.9. That's only if you're like using a sniper or something. I'm um, trying to cover some more stuff. Target aim assist, of course, is on. Aim assist type is black ops. Black Ops aim assist is probably like the strongest aim assist to use. So honestly, I'd recommend Black Ops. You can run default. It's totally up to you, but Black Ops definitely gives you a stronger aim assist feel. And then everything else is there. Gameplay automatic tax sprint. Just to save like the duration of your controller. So you're not like smashing down the L3 every time you have to sprint. It just works best. Um, your tax sprint behavior. Mine's at that double tap. Uh, ground and Manta, you want this off so you can better, uh, better slide cancel. And then... Uh, slide dive behavior i do tap the slide because it's just more responsive and then uh i don't think there's really too much else in here the slide cancel sprint after like the update you definitely want this off so make sure that's another key setting as well um a lot of these other things interact reload pre or behavior mine's that uh interact because i've never changed it ever since i played like rebirth island way back when and for some reason i've never changed it so i guess i'm just still not going to change it but other than that, that's pretty much it for uh, uh, the controller settings. Now, moving on to graphics. On-demand texture streaming. This is off. This will create a lot of packet burst if you have it on. So, if you are getting a lot of packet burst and have the setting on, 
make sure to turn it off it'll improve your game trust me uh world motion blur and weapon motion blur are both off i just think these are visually unappealing uh in all aspects in any sort of way and anytime i see gameplay with motion blur on i just like click off because i don't like it so hey uh film grain mine is at a uh, zero so that you know i get a smooth looking game otherwise if you had it like maxed out it just looks grainy and stuff it's just not the vibe depth of field is off uh this gives off a little more of a blur and again i don't mess with the blur build out x or fx cast you want this on and then you want this at a strength at 100 i've heard people like playing without this on and like their game is just horrible so this is another big setting um 120 obviously my fov is at 113 i don't know why i just picked a random number so you can pick like honestly anywhere between 100 to 120 honestly totally up to you ads of uh, field of view is affected uh this is totally personal preference but i think at a higher sense of, or higher fov you want this at affected and if you're running like 100 or lower you definitely want it at independent and then for the weapon field of view mine used to be at wide but uh there used to be like a glitch or honestly there might still be a glitch where you're like at like 200 fov and your game just looks goofy so switch i switched the default and i haven't had the bug since and that's why i have it on there uh first camera movement you want this at least so basically if you're like getting grenaded or something streak uh your screen will shake as less as possible and honestly the screen shaking was really bad in like a vanguard or something i don't know what game it was but ever since then i had mine at least then everything else is pretty much totally up to you audio these are totally like my settings like i'll get into this later but the home theater is definitely the best option to use i know headphones and headphone fast boost would like make the most sense but uh home theater has just definitely been the wave i don't know why i've just seen pro players rock it so whatever the pros use i rock so um my master master volume is at 20 this is just totally all me i would totally have this cranked if i didn't have like a separate audio thing but 20 is just the best for me and then gameplay music zero i don't mess with this <laughs> music and then dialogue effects like this is just total personal preference like this doesn't affect your gameplay in any sort of way uh just like all this other stuff like this just does not affect your gameplay in any sort of way uh i might mess around with the hit marker sound effects i will see but uh, other than that that's it for audio now for our last setting or section here in the settings is uh, interface there's really not much other than color customization my hud palette is at custom and then obviously you can pick whatever colors you'd like and then my color filters at filter 2 color filter targets at both and my world and interface colors in <laughs> intensity is both at 100 i've been i think these are like the same as like mw2 they just make the game look more vibrant to me but obviously play around with these see what you like i mean i've seen a lot of like different colors that people use for all these colors so totally up to you personal preference uh mini map shape is square uh it just shows more of the mini map to me or honestly in all general aspects of the way so you're putting yourself at a disadvantage if you're using a round one um really not nothing much else uh your telemetry uh i have servants server geez, server latency and pack a loss both on so i'm going to see if i'm lagging or not uh obviously those are definitely pretty helpful and then honestly there's nothing else other than that i'm not going to go into account network go into here but uh yeah those are my settings here in call of duty modern warfare 3 hope you guys found this video helpful if you guys have any more questions make sure to slap them down in the comments down below and i'll see you guys in the next video Peace.